Hello, everyone, and welcome to our monthly research briefing. I'm Vanessa Weisberg from the Celiac Disease Program at Boston Children's Hospital. And this month, we are talking about another study looking at a drug for celiac disease. I can't believe that two months in a row, we've had such exciting drug studies to talk about. It's so great to see that there are more treatments being tested for celiac disease. And it hopefully means that in the not too distant future, there will be a viable alternative to the gluten-free diet for all of us living with celiac disease. As usual, we have our amazing director of research, Dr. Jocelyn Sylvester, here to answer lots of questions about this trial. So to get started, Dr. Sylvester, the drug being studied was called Z1227. Can you tell our listeners who is making this potential medication and how it could help people with celiac disease? Yes. So this trial was conducted by Dr. Falk, which is a company based out of Germany. Some of the early work on this medication actually came out of Stanford uh, University. Great. So it was a proof of concept trial. What is that? Yes. So when we think about drug development, as you mentioned, there's been many studies recently and there's sort of two exciting phases. One is these early phase trials that we're seeing where there's been animal studies and now it's being tried in humans. And this is an exciting time because this is where most drugs fail. And so what's exciting is that the drug we talked about last month, TAC-101, and this drug, um, Z1227, are both looking promising early on. The next phase is the phase two and phase three stage where you need larger trials. And they tend to be more successful because we've learned more about the drug, um, but that's the step, the next step for these um, studies. So there's a ways to go yet, but it's exciting that we're having drugs that are passing the starting line because this proof of concept is really looking to see if all those things that looked promising in animals look promising in humans. And also that when you give it to humans, it appears safe. That's, it is so exciting that we're getting across that starting line. So how does Z1227 work? So this drug was designed to be a very specific inhibitor of TTG, the tissue transglutaminase. And many of our listeners will have had antibody levels to tissue transglutaminase measured. Um, tissue transglutaminase is an enzyme that can modify proteins either by taking an amino, deaminating them, um, or tying two together, transaminating them. And this, the transglutaminase has been implicated in celiac disease because it can cross-link itself to gluten. It also can deaminate gluten. And we know that when gluten is deaminated, it sticks better to DQ2. And so um, there's reasons to believe that if we could block this enzyme, then we might have less celiac disease. The problem is that this enzyme is in almost every cell in our body. And so when you start working with something that is that common, you're more likely to have side effects in theory because it's a more important thing. Interesting. Um, did patients in the trial have a lot of side effects? So that was one of the things that was interesting about the trial was that there were not apparently a lot of side effects from the drug, but this is actually one of the challenges that we have to overcome in celiac disease because testing a drug for celiac disease that's an alternative to a gluten-free diet is kind of unlike testing anything else because we know that people with celiac disease generally are on a gluten-free diet, which means we don't really know what their symptoms on gluten are. So then when we give people gluten plus a drug, it's hard to figure out, are those symptoms from gluten or are those symptoms from the drug? So this is one of the reasons why it's really important in these trials for them to be what we call controlled. And so this was a controlled trial because in addition to having three different doses of the drug, there's also a group that got placebo. So by comparing the types of symptoms that the people who got placebo drug and real gluten got to the people who got real drug, plus gluten, we can start to tease apart, are there more symptoms related to gluten or are there more symptoms related to the drug? Um, but it's one of the things that makes celiac disease complicated. Absolutely. So is Z1227 a pill or is it a drug that's administered by an IV? It's a pill. And did the people who participated in the trial have to eat gluten? So yes. Um, the in order to show that you can take eat gluten when you take a drug, you have to eat gluten. 
And this is one of the really important principles of doing drug studies in celiac disease is that depending on the mechanism of the drug, but for most drugs at some point since the goal is to improve gluten tolerance in some way, gluten has to be administered. Otherwise it's hard to know if the drug works because you can't see if a drug is protecting you from gluten if you're not eating gluten. So the participants in this trial did consume gluten and the amount of gluten that they got was three grams per day. And this was in the form of a biscuit because they were looking sort of at long-term effects of gluten. And if they took the gluten for six weeks, which is less gluten for more time than the other trial we talked about. And the importance of having less gluten is we know that the more gluten you have, the more likely you are to have symptoms. So a lower amount of gluten is probably more tolerable than a higher amount. Absolutely. So the study tested three doses of the drug. Did they all work the same or was one better than another? Yes. So in these early studies, one of the goals is to make sure that safety is there. And so usually the starting dose is a dose that is lower than the dose that's thought to be effective, but high enough that if there's a high risk of side effects, hopefully they'll be really mild and they can be discovered before giving higher doses. And so that's why this is called a dose ranging study because there's an ascending dose. So they gave the first dose, which was 10 milligrams. And if and they had a safety committee review. And since that appeared safe, then they were allowed to progress to the next good dose. And then after reviewing that, they were allowed to progress to the next dose. So this gives them an opportunity to compare doses while making sure that the trial participants are protected. And there was perhaps a suggestion that it worked a bit better in the 100 milligram, the highest dose group for the um, drug. So if all goes well with future trials, would Z1227 allow patients to eat a normal gluten containing diet or would it just be to prevent cross contact? So that's a great question and really not one that's answered by the study. The endpoints in the study, so when doing a clinical trial, the investigators always have to say in advance, what are they trying to achieve by giving the drug? And so their primary endpoint was actually histology. And so they wanted to show that they could give people this gluten and they didn't have a worsening in their histology, um, which they met that primary endpoint. Um, and then the secondary endpoint was symptoms. Um, and that one was a bit harder to evaluate because the people in the trial, not surprisingly, were relatively asymptomatic because symptomatic people are not generally the first people to volunteer for a gluten challenge. And so there's some self-selection in terms of the people who are in the trial. So if you wanna show an effect on symptoms, it's easier if you have people who have more symptoms because there's more opportunity for difference. Um, since these people were relatively asymptomatic, it's hard to reduce asymptomatic to less symptomatic. For sure. So the question everyone wants an answer to is when. So what is next for Z1227? So this is the first study for this drug. And so there's some signal here about perhaps what dose would be useful, but it needs to be studied further in a phase, so-called phase two trial to look closer at efficacy and get a better idea in more patients in what the side effect profile is. So that would be the first step. And assuming that's promising, then it would be to move on to phase three trials, which is looking for a specific indication in a narrow population. And so this is where the developers of the drug have to decide, okay, are we gonna say this is a drug to let you have as much gluten as you want, in which case they need to design a trial where people can have as much gluten as they want, or is it for gluten exposure, in which case they need to design a trial where people are on a gluten-free diet but might be getting exposed. And so all of these decisions affect what happens at the end. Um, and we'll have to see what happens with this. One of the things we haven't talked about, which is one of the big rate determining steps is money. Because of course, running the trial costs money and without money, drugs go nowhere. And so doing larger trials is a significant financial undertaking. So that's also the next step for this drug is to make sure that there's enough money to be able to move it forward. Well, this is all so interesting, Dr. Sylvester, and it's just so exciting that we have so many options, hopefully coming down the pike. We just want to thank you again for joining us today to explain all of this research to our patient families, and we hope everyone enjoyed this brief, and we will talk to you again next month.